Today, we are sitting down with sexuality educator and breast cancer survivor, Erica Hart, to discuss her journey on embracing her body and becoming a breast cancer advocate. You're seven years in remission, which is incredible news. Can you explain a bit about the process of being diagnosed with bilateral breast cancer? I was diagnosed with bilateral breast cancer in uh, May 2014. And bilateral meaning I had two different types of breast cancer, one in the right and one in the left. I found a lump in my right breast by doing a self-exam. I will say that I was reluctant to go to the doctor. I have a family history of breast cancer. My mom is deceased from breast cancer. So I was just terrified. I was diagnosed in the middle of Wall Street. Thank God for New York City because no one bothers you if you are naked walking up and down the street or if you are literally crying because you just heard that you're diagnosed with cancer. When you embarked on the the decision to go through with reconstructive surgery, not do that with your nipples and kind of embrace your scars, what role did your autonomy play in that decision. When I had my double mastectomy, I didn't want folks to really see the scar across my chest. My breasts were no longer round, they were kind of like square. You have to expand the skin and the tissue in order to place either a silicone implant or a saline implant. Some people opt to have their scar underneath their breast, so sort of where you can't see it. And mine is across. And I don't think I was ever told that you have that option. So I would say that's one example of, you know, the lack of bodily autonomy is that I didn't have the information on how this is supposed to be. And the nipples that I saw, they're like constructed out of your fatty tissue somewhere from your body. And it just didn't work for me. So I was able to say no to that. But it was really challenging because again, medical racism has completely you know, kept out Black people, even Black patients. So the images that are there and perpetuated around breast cancer do not have us represented. How do you go from a place of getting comfortable with your quote unquote new body and then deciding that I'm now going to advocate and teach other people what's going on here? When it came to realizing that Black breast cancer survivors were not represented, not just in racial identity, but also in gender, as a Black queer non-binary femme, I really wanted to raise awareness. So I used my body like I have for most of my life to have it make a statement. From there, it really became an opportunity for me to talk about how folks living with chronic illnesses and disabilities across the board are kept from pleasure. Did your relationship or the way that you approached sexuality change at all? I think it changed in the sense of me being way more mindful of what I need and what my partner needs. Telling folks not to be gentle with my breast because I don't need that. Don't treat me like a delicate flower. Like I I want a rough. That's not the case for every breast cancer survivor, but that's what I want. Like I have to tell people I don't have nipples. And that was something I never had to do before. Before I went topless, bit on dating sites and sent people like a nude selfie, like after they sent me one. And literally some people have stopped talking to me after I sent them one. I can laugh now, but oh my God, was that traumatizing. Like literally ghosted after that. You've walked runways, you've started campaigns. What is kind of the end goal for you. I really want the end of anti-Black racism, the end of transphobia, the end of classism, the end of fat phobia. I really want my presence and the things that I talk about and teach about to really be a disruption. Not just my presence, which I already know is a disruption. That is my end goal and I am nowhere near achieving that, but I won't stop if that means I have to walk down a runway to be in a space that oftentimes excludes Black people who look like me, then so be it. So if you came here just for breast cancer inspirational porn, I apologize. (laughs) Because that is not the work that I do. I <laughs> do.